All right, so welcome back. So we're going to get started on drawing the pair. But before we draw the pair, we need to talk probably a little bit about drawing this wonderful object. And so we're going to do a very quick overview of what we learned in the first class so that we can then draw the contours. In other words, the line drawing that represents our wonderful pair here. So I'm going to put him aside for a moment. And in the first class, and that is the power of line, which is our you know, basic drawing class where we learn about measuring and creating these different shapes like rectangles and triangles and circles and all that good stuff. And we learned about siding and measuring. And so with measuring, we were able to measure the width to height. And if I took my little pair here and I measured the width and took it into the height, I'm going to find out that this pair is about my unit being my width. It's going to be one and a third units tall by one unit wide. So you take the widest part, pardon me, you take the shortest part and you divide it into the longest. So it'd be the width into the height. And so the width is our one increment and that this is one and a third times as tall as it is wide. And so by doing that, we get a width line and a height line that we could then turn into a rectangle. And this rectangle is one and a third times as tall as it is wide. The basic proportions for our pair. It's height to width ratio. We then talked about finding a center line using X marks the spot, and we could use a center line. Now because this is a piece of fruit and this doesn't stand straight up, it leans. So I found the center line first and then I ran the axis line. The axis line is, is showing the lean of this object and this right here is showing my axis line. So we get our rectangle which is the height the width relationships in that rectangle we would then, X marks the spot, put in our center line, then we would draw our axis line. And the reason I use the rectangle is you can start looking for alignments. Uh, the part where it actually touched the ground is over here to this side of my center line. And then it, it leans and it, it, it hit the rectangle, I was using measuring, to figure out that this, this axis line hit the rectangle about at the quarter point, just, just before the quarter point. And it was almost two thirds of the way over at the bottom, almost a quarter in at the top, and that's my axis line. So you, to, to draw this thing, we're, we're, doing, we're not doing just a caricature of this pair, we're actually doing what's called a rendering or a portrait. We're trying to really make it look like the pair we're working with. And so that's why we're going to go through these very formalized sorts of ideas so that we can know how to do it. Now when you get really good at this, you can start hopping through these different, you know, get a basic idea of the height, the width, start to, and then jump right on in thinking of the rectangle but drawing the object you can shortcut it, but in the beginning you want to very formally do this because it helps your brain start to focus on these very subtle relationships. So then once we had our axis line and our center line, we then went to the next part shown here where we went to construction drawing. Okay. Now when we did the first class, we did a whole selection of, of objects and for the most part, we we're just trying to make them look pretty much like what they were. We're trying to ratchet it up now. We're trying to make it look even better. And we're doing, again, a portrait, which is we're really dealing with just the pair. And so we're going to hyper focus on it. And so what we would do is with this construction, I was thinking of the circle. Now, this actually, the construction of this thing is actually closer to an ellipse or even an, an oval, if, depending on how you look at it. But what I was doing is I was going and completing the circle because it, sometimes it's easier to modify the circle when you're doing a portrait like this. Okay, We can use construction one of two ways. This is one way to do it. So with this, I, again, I look to where the, the circle actually breaks outside the bottom of my rectangle because the bottom of this is cut off, is shorn off a bit. And so, anyways, we try to look for that circle, and then we're, we're basically going to carve in from the circle. We also have the cone, or what we've simplified into kind of a polygon, but it's essentially a triangle with the top cut off for the top up here. And we can still see our center line. We can still see our axis line, which gives us the lean for our pair. 
And this is our basic construction. Now the basic construction with construction drawing is again just a, it's a simplified idea of the pair. It's basically a circle with, or if we want to, we'd say a sphere with a cone, but since we flattened it out, it's now a circle and basically a modified triangle. Kind of cut the tip off and then we kind of put an angle there, right there. We would go to the next part and this is the part we didn't cover. So we're gonna get here to this next part and with this next part, which we're going to do here and going forward that we didn't do so much in the other class, is that we're going to look at this object and I'm going to try to see if I can turn this to about where it was when I was looking at it. Um, it's about here-ish. It's a little turned a little differently, but it's close enough. Um, there we go. That's probably a little better. But instead of just drawing the curves, we could just draw curves over the top of it. But it's usually we're gonna be off a little bit. So what we do instead, and then again, this is if we're doing a portrait. Now, if I'm doing just a basic pair and a little pair among a dozen objects, I'm not gonna worry about it being a portrait of the pair. I just need to look pair-like enough that I can get away with it. With this, we're trying to get a little, you know, zone, zoom in on this thing, you know, and hyper-focus on it so we really get something that's closer to the real, feeling of this pair. And so what we do is with straight lines, artists will always take straight lines and curves and we try to break them into straight passages. Okay? And then you can draw the curve over the top of those straight passages. So the reason we do that is when you start breaking curves into straight sections, now we can measure that section we can compare that section to another section and look for angles. We can check if this is in the right place based on where this angle breaks and where that angle breaks. This is up a little higher on this side. It's higher on this side. It comes off the, the cone lower on that side. You know, and we can start to, start to look for where it touches the cone, where it, it swells out, where it touches the rectangle. This, it touches way down here on this pair. This one touches a little bit more towards the whoops, towards the center of the bulb, right about here. So by using these straight passages, and I got these big garish dots on here, but then, and some of them are not exactly straight. I, did, I, I didn't do this with a ruler, I just did these by hand. But the idea is that we start with these straight lengths first. And again, we would do this in the beginning, you know, so that we can start focusing on breaking down curves. If I can take this and break this into straight lines, it's gonna be much easier to replicate that curve, looking for the main points of where it straightens, there and then there. And these have, this has quite a few little dots. I could have simplified it. This would have become a straight line. This would become a straight line. But to really kind of do the, the drawing where I want sort of more of the nuance, you would start to expand those straight lines out to get more little lengths. Like this right here starting to already give us the the silhouette, if you will, of that pair. And so that's what we're doing. We're trying to take curves and then go ahead and turn them into straight lines, like what we've done right here, okay? And if we look at this, now this green outline is, is, is this original construction. So I have this, this uh, green line here, and hopefully you can see very clearly how much of this basic construction has been trimmed and cut into to make this pair. And again, this was also like I, I noticed, oh, well, the circle needed to lift and different things like that. So this was just a basic approximation. And this is where we're honing in on it. We're getting even closer. So again, we use these straight passages to, you know, create these straight lines for our silhouette of our drawing. And then from here, you could come over this, um, you could then curve these lines out into the, the, the uh, curves that you need for that drawing. But again, so again, you would draw over, over these, you know, these points to then make your finished drawing. Obviously this would not be this dark. This would be light, light lines. Same thing with my construction. This would be light, light lines. 
along with my center line, along with my axis line. This would be very light so I could then draw over the top of it and then no one would be the wiser as to how it was created. Now with this one, like I was talking about, we're doing a portrait and so I actually broke the circle out because again, what that circle represents is I was just continuing, I was looking for where the circle started and then seeing as the circle came around, around, around this, the outside of this foot, I probably can't see the tip, so there we go. The circle comes out and around and then comes back around. I was trying to find that. So with this one, we carved into that circle. We carved, a, carved it away. Just like it was clay, we started building out areas and we started pulling areas away. This is one way of doing it. Um, normally, unless I'm doing a portrait and I'm doing one rendering of one object, I would do this if I was doing a rendering of one object and one object only. If I had a collection of things, I would do it a little more like this. With this, I've, I've kind of shrunk in, so I'm looking for the inner inside here. I'm going to kind of trim off the outside and look for that inner, inner, inner circle, the inner circle that's you know inside the pair. And then I build out. So if I was doing a still life with a lot of different objects, I would kind of shrink it down, make it smaller than, than what that circle is, and then I'd go to my straight lines, and the straight lines are building out. This is kind of like our skeleton, and this would kind of be like the muscle and the, and the fat and the skin on top of the bones. So with this one, you're expanding out. Um, and where we did this the most, where this cut in was mostly on the circle. But you can do either way. You can either cut in or you can build out, and sometimes you'll do both. You'll actually be cutting in in some areas and building out on others because you're changing stuff. But this is what I would normally do on, um, when I have like a collection of objects. I will look at it, kind of look for it, look, look at on the slimmer side, kind of cut into it a little bit when, I, when I'm making my little armature, and then I would build outward. And you're gonna come with this. And I, you know, this again has a, a fairly good drawing or a fairly good approximation of our silhouette. I shouldn't say silhouette, I should say contour because we're not just doing the outs. Well, this is the silhouette, but we're actually gonna do a full line drawing, which means we're gonna, we're, we're gonna work inside, not just the outside. So, but this is, uh, is pretty much the silhouette of that pair, again, that are straight. Again, we would come in here and we would take this, these straights, and they would start to round out and round off, and that would become our, our more finished drawing. And so we're actually gonna do this. We're actually gonna, so whether you build outward or cut in, you're gonna, that would be very, very light. So what I've got here is I've prepped a really, really, really light drawing where I, you know, I probably barely see it on there, where I did the, I've done the construction and all this good stuff. And now on top of this construction, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to draw my pair. So, We've got, and again, I'm, I've got a, uh, a 2B pencil, so hopefully you can really see this. Um, but I'm going to come in here, and using some sort of calligraphy, as some people would call it, I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm making this, again, much darker. Normally, if I'm going to shade this, I don't want the lines too dark because again, this would look like a cartoon. So understand that I'm making this a lot darker so you guys can see it. Right, so that's the stem. <laughs> and then from the stem, we're gonna come out here and we're gonna come over here like so. Now, on this, the, there's a slight overlap because the cone begins to come in a little bit. And my because it's no longer, this is kind of an interior line, I'm gonna have to lighten it. That interior line. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe lighten this just a little bit more this is a kneaded eraser. You can just tap on that a little bit. All right. But I need this to come in because what's going to happen behind it is this is my overlap. This is the bulb 
of the pair coming around here like so Again, I'm making this a little bolder so we can see it. Uh, I'm also going to try to make some, this is an interior line, this is an overlap again, because we have a section, this, um, and I'll, I'll have the, a picture of the pair uh, side over here so you can kind of see it. Um, so what we're going to do is, again, this is, there's a section that overlaps and comes into here and kind of meets up with this. We're going to keep that a light line because it's an interior line. It's not, you know, as important as the exterior call that a hierarchy certain lines are more important than other lines and, and so that certainly would fall into that category and we're gonna then gonna come down into here for the foot okay now if this was a contour drawing in other words if I wasn't gonna do value over the top of this I'd really start to start playing with a line thick to thin, it's like just like calligraphy. And if it's going into shadow, it's gonna get thicker and it's gonna get darker, and if it comes out of shadow, it gets thinner and lighter. And it just has a nicer, what we call line quality. This foot tucks behind a third little, a uh, second foot. I said third, but I meant to say second. So this goes behind this. So this is gonna be an overlap. And remember when we overlap something, we push it back, whether it's another object, or in this case, just another line. Okay, so this is in shadow here. So it's gonna be darker and a little thicker. Now I'm rounding this out a little bit. This is actually a little bit too, uh, like this is all, like this should flatten out just a little bit through here, just a tiny bit. But again, I'm not going to worry a ton about that. This should flatten a little here. This should flatten just a little bit there. You just, if, you, if it gets too, um, too flowy, uh, if, not that that's, an, that's not always a bad thing, but if we're doing something where we have, like this pair is a little, uh, it, it has some places that are very round, but then it has some other places that go slightly flatter. But if we make everything curves, 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 and curves, it starts to feel a little whimsical. It starts to feel more like a, uh, a cartoon drawing. Um, so you gotta be careful of that. Now, some people have used that for stylization, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, and so there's been some very famous artists that, that like that sort of a look, and that's what they're going for. And so that's, that's perfectly fine as far as that goes but we're not necessarily looking for that okay uh, I'm gonna come around here this again this kind of has a a flare at the back and it comes over here over and comes down into the bulb now again, there's a part where this part of the cone is going to come in front of the bulb that's going behind. This is kind of like your shoulder. This is the neck and that's the shoulder. The shoulder comes behind the neck and uh, you can see the the muscle wrap, the trapezius muscle wrap behind and around the neck, depending on your point of view, of course. But it's the same sort of thing, that you have natural overlaps if you're drawing people and faces because of musculature and, you know, different bits of, of uh, fat and skin folds and muscle attachments and different things like that, you're going to have areas that are going to have natural overlapping. And it's actually going to be for anything you're going to be drawing, including our pair. So this again comes up. And comes out. Like 
like so. Now this so far mostly, except for where we broke in with the stem, is mostly, you know, the uh, silhouette. And again, we want the outside of this darker. Then the, the, uh, the insides start to get a little lighter because, again, that's what's called a hierarchy. A hierarchy means certain lines are more important than others. And so the outside line should be more important than the inside. Now, again, we're going to be doing a value drawing, so we're not going to be working so much with the contours and the hierarchies, but we don't want to ignore them either. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is um, we're going to... Do, we're gonna we're gonna deal with some of the interior stuff happening on my on my pair. All right, so let's go ahead and on this pair we have where um, this comes in. This comes in a little bit, and it picks up into a little section where it it's sort of dished and then it bulbs out. There's you know like a section. This goes a little flatter and then goes around the corner. So this is causing, um, and so I want these lines to be a little bit lighter, but we're going to start to deal with some of the typography because we're, we want to think form. And even when we're deal dealing with just a, a uh, what we call a contour drawing, we're going to try to in incorporate some of the things that are happening on our pair. Like there's a section here where this, the, a little bit of the cone comes around and then it hits into this other ridge line that's overlapping and this overlap starts to come up here and then it spreads out and starts to come a little bit around the cone. That's very, very soft. This gets a little bit more of the edge. That would get a little bit darker. Not as dark as the outside, but it's going to get a little bit darker. And again, this is just form understanding. This is understanding how to deal with the contour. And this comes down. And this is why there's a bump here and a bump here because this is a section that is coming down and around and then comes out through there. Now, the um, I might have a slight, because I'm drawing from the pair, uh, the photograph I have might not be exactly, uh, it might be turned a little bit more than what I'm looking at right now. So there might be some variation, but I just wanted to, I want to have the photograph there just so you can start to see and start to look at uh, some of the different things that are happening on on the pair. Again, there's sort of a, there's, there's sort of a, this starts to come down and there's a section that kicks out and it makes like this modified diamond shape. Okay. So again, this is just giving a, a nod to what is happening on this pair. This comes around this little, this, this swell that comes across there. It comes around there and then back into the cone as we have, you know, again, this, this section, uh, you know, anyways, we could, we could get more into this where this is the top ridge. Now, again, these, these lines are very, very light. And uh, for the most part, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry a, a ton about these, except what we are doing is, is that these places, these little different, like this shelf, if we're dealing with value, this is going to be lighter, this would be darker. So we do want to be thinking of why we're doing it, we do want to be thinking about what information it gives us. Um, there's the same thing up here. There's a part where this this uh, stem kind of hits the side of the ridge of this pair. This ridge is rounded. Again, we would show this with with value, but if I was doing a contour, you might even look to where the there's a, what's called a shoulder. And you can look to where the shoulder kind of dives in, comes up over and dives into the pair a little bit because it starts to show a little bit that this is the, the front side of the pair and this is the back. And this is a little too dark. You have that, that looks like a stripe, right? But it's, it's just an indication of the form line. That's a little better. So we've got to be careful that we don't get, this doesn't get too dark because if, if it does, it's going to start to look like it's, these are very soft nuances. And if it's too dark, it's going to look like it's a major uh, swell or something like that, and it's not. This over here where the, the stem kind of slams into where this turns around, well, we could thicken that because that is a pretty important junction. Um, I kind of got that a little too thick, and that little last mark was not what I wanted. Um, 
And then we could even have the fact, so this comes around this ridge. Uh, this starts to follow a little bit in a couple places. It'll start to pick up the ridge line on some of these divisions coming around here. And again, that means this is the top. So this is the flatter part where the stem's going to be growing from, right? Or it has, it dives in a little bit. It's kind of like, you know, for those that have drawn an apple, and we will certainly draw an apple, not in this class, but in other classes, uh, you have, again, the shoulder, and it goes down to the little funnel. Well, this has a funnel, but it's very shallow. The funnel is, is, is not very deep. It's very, very flat in comparison to an apple. But if this is not flat across, this has a little bump that bumps here and comes down and then bumps over here. So again, fairly, fairly soft, but it's still that's happening. This little thing right here is what we call, this is thinking of form, like your little ant walking across here with little bits of ink on his feet. And it just helps you to try to understand what's going on with the contour line. Now we're not going to get any more into contour than that, but this right here, this actually needs probably to be kind of stylized because this dives in here, this comes over here, this breaks here. It's a little, it's a little clunkier than the, the smooth flowy line I put there. And again, you got to be careful because we have all these different planes and a smooth flowy line makes it seem like it's all curvy. And sometimes it's not curvy, sometimes it's a rounded edge. And we've, we, we get those on this pair where there's times where it's a rounded edge. And there's other times it's just kind of flowy and, and, and round. But this right here is the basic contour of our pair. And so I wanted to get us to the point where we can kind of see what we're using. Again, I, to create this pair, I first started with a light sketch like this. I then did my little straight edges. That was super soft, so you couldn't see it. But I wanted to show you just how light it was. You know, I could still see it, but it was just dark enough so I could still see it so that I could then come over the top of it and put in the finished edge, the finished edge work. And that's what we've got here. We've got the finished edge work on this, on this drawing right here. I've got my little eraser here that looks like a pencil, but it's an eraser. It's just a really thin, and if I had to, I could come over and clean this up. And again, normally, if I was going to do a drawing, uh, a value drawing, this, now this looks lighter in the camera, probably by about 25% lighter than what it actually is on my page. Part of that's graphite because it, it picks up and kicks off the glare, and so it, it looks lighter than what it actually is. But in other words, that's a little, that happens, oh no, I dropped something on it. Well, I just get out my little white eraser, and I take that out, or at least lighten it as much as I could. But again, this right here would be, you know, again, much darker than what I would actually use to draw the pair with. Uh, on the pair drawing video, you'll see a light little drawing, like kind of like this over here for the outside lines as well, because I don't want big, dark, rich, you know, because it'd look like a cartoon. But we do want to be able to draw the contour of this pair. So, you know, again, we, we started with, um, you start with the square, find the center line, find the axis line, then do the basic construction, and then do the straights for all the different curves, and then do our curved little line. Again, we do that to help us start to see better what we are observing. Um, or if you're a more advanced drawer or an intermediate drawer, you might go, okay, I'm gonna jump right on in with my axis line, do my quick construction, which is what I did with this, and then I just went over with my final line. It doesn't have to take long. Like usually if I would draw this, uh, before I start drawing, I draw in like five minutes, maybe eight minutes tops. So once you get used to, to using the method, it becomes very, very, very easy. So I want you to guys to go ahead and take the reference that I've included uh, for the pair that we're going to be drawing and go ahead and using that photograph and draw your contour line of the pair. If, uh, if that still seems a little daunting, I'd prefer you to draw this by hand but if you need to try to do some sort of a, you could do a tracing if you wanted to, uh, or you could grid it if you wanted to. I'd prefer you guys try to start learning uh, to use the construction because that will take you to, you'll have better confidence with drawing much more quickly. And gridding only works for copying. We are kind of copying stuff in the beginning, but for imaginative drawing, cartooning, uh, illustration, 
fine art, these other things. There's a lot of times where you're making, you're, you're modifying stuff and sometimes you're making stuff up from what you know. And a good artist can, can do an entire painting that looks really realistic, all from memory. And it starts out with basically learning how to draw. This is using contour lines, using lines, using constructions, using axis lines and center lines. That's where we start, that's how we, that's how we begin. So go ahead and do that. And we're gonna go ahead and on the next part, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the shading part of our, of our little pair. All right, thanks for joining me. Go ahead and get, get started on the drawing the contour and then tune in for talking about planes and values. All right, you guys have a good one. Get started drawing, bye-bye.